Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, April 24th, and it's a nice day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, Mid-50s this morning, so not too bad. Uh, I'm going to have some sun, a little bit of clouds, but no rain. Got a lot of yard work done yesterday, so I'm happy about that. Uh, today I'm just not doing much of anything. Going to have a nice relaxing Sunday. Got my uh, Boswell shot shell uh, gift from my buddy Jack Kurtz. I'm going to be lighting that up in a minute because I want to talk a little bit about lighting, tamping, and ash. But uh, just while I'm on the topic of Jack, I talked to him yesterday. A lot of folks have been asking about him. Uh, he's doing well. He's he's in a rehab center. He they've got him uh, up and walking, and he's you know getting stronger and all that. And hopefully he'll be heading home uh, soon. So uh, that that's great. Uh, let him know that you know a lot of folks are praying for him, and he really appreciates that and uh, appreciates all the well wishes and everything. So thank you guys for that. I uh, I know it means a lot to him. And I'm smoking this pipe today. Partly because I love smoking this pipe, but also just uh, in, in Jack's honor. So I hope he's, uh, I know he's not watching now because he doesn't have the ability to do so in the rehab center. But when he gets home, he's going to try to catch up on videos. So maybe you'll see this. So hi, Jack. Anyway, I wanted to talk today uh, about a couple things. I've got some shop updates and stuff, but uh, I wanted to talk about this concept of, uh, you know, smoking to a clean white ash as the, the phrase is is used. Uh, I saw a post on, uh, it was on the My Face this morning, uh, I forget who posted it, and it was one of the Pipe Club uh, forums, and they were saying, you know, I can never get to a clean white ash, what's what's going on, what's the trick, how important is that, and all, and there, there was a bunch of really good answers, but, you know, the fact is, you, you ask five people, five pipe smokers, and you're going to get 14 different answers. It, it's not something that has an answer, to be honest. It's, it's a personal preference kind of thing. So I want to talk a little bit about my experience with smoking to a clean white ash. And part of it, in my opinion, has to do with how you light your pipe. And I think this is important. You know, I've seen people, so you, you've probably all heard that you have to do the charring light or the first light, and then you tamp, and then you do a second light. That's the way I was taught. Um, and that's the way I've always done it. Now you'll hear people say, "Oh, you don't have to do that. You know, I can I can get it lit the first light, and you don't need to do the second light." And uh, they like these tampers that like the, the the Art Deco tampers that have the holes in them. I, I don't have one here, but so you can actually tamp and draw through them. Uh, that's that's fine. That works. You can do that. But I think the the light tamp light thing is actually pretty important for how the rest of the bowl smokes so let me show you how i do it and then i'll talk about why i think that's important so this is loaded with haunted bookshop uh the first light i'm just gonna try to get a nice even light on that just you know going all around and Give it a puff or two. Now, I could probably continue to smoke this and it would be fine. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my tamper. This is an old wooden one that I made. And I'm just going to lightly press down and turn. I'm going to do that all the way around. Not putting much pressure on at all. Just a little bit more than the weight of the tamper. And this is a very light tamper. And what I'm doing now, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see anything there, but... I've got the top is charred, and I've just evened it out. I've just made like a flat layer on the top. And what that's doing is it's essentially giving you a surface that's like a charcoal briquette. That's gonna, it's already burned, right? So it's not gonna, it's not gonna burn anymore. You can't burn ash, but it's gonna heat up, and the tobacco below it is gonna burn, and it's gonna continue to stay hot, and that means that you're both going to have fewer relights just because you've got that protective sort of hot uh, coal on the top and it also means that it's going to burn evenly as it goes down and that's really important because most burnouts happen because of an uneven light sometimes it's something like wind is blowing and it's causing it to burn down one side but very often it's how you light the pipe that causes a burnout 
So let's do the second light now. Now this should, if I'm not talking, I will probably be able to smoke through this bowl of haunted bookshop and, um, you know, if it was a flake, it might be different, but a, a ribbon cut, I could probably smoke through this without any, any relays, but I'm talking, so I'm not going to be able to do that. Don't know how well this will show up, but hopefully now you can see that's white. So it's actually starting to, uh, generate that clean white ash. By the way, don't Google clean white ash, <laughs> or maybe you should. Um, I I was thinking I'd find like picture of a cigar with a, with an ash on it, or, or maybe a pipe that's been knocked out. It's all marijuana. I apparently clean white ash is a thing in the marijuana world. Uh, so I'm probably going to get a lot of odd comments on this from people that don't know me. Uh, that just found the video based on the title. Anyway, I'm smoking haunted bookshop. That's that's what I like. You guys smoke what you like. Now sometimes you'll start to feel the the, the smoke weakening. Uh, you're just not getting the same level. And, and th th that might be because you're talking and it's starting to go out. Well, one thing you can do, and you see me do this a lot, is just lightly cover the ball and draw. And what that does is it's it's kind of it's putting resistance on the top of the the chimney, if you will, and that resistance means that the air that's getting through is going faster. You're, you're doing a narrow opening. It's like um, if you if you blow through a very a, a narrow soda straw, you'll get a fast stream of air out at the end but if you get one of those big uh, bubble straws and you do the same thing same amount of pressure you're going to have much less air coming through or, or it's going to feel like the air is coming through much more slowly and that's uh, uh, what do you call fluid dynamics and we don't need to talk about it but it's one way to save a relay So, as you smoke, there's going to be a need to tamp. And why do you do that? Well, remember that layer of charcoal that I talked about that you're trying to maintain and keep things nice and smooth. The ash is going to start to insulate that from above. And it's going to be harder and harder for that to stay lit. So, an occasional, just gentle, again, just barely more pressure than what the uh, the tamper provides on its own. Um, and then I, I like to knock the tamper off on the sides of the pipe, just a little bit less ash floating around. You do that when you feel you need to. You'll, you'll develop a rhythm. Uh, you don't have to do it every puff. <laughs> you should do it probably more than once a bowl. And if you do that, is that going to guarantee that you always get a clean white ash? No, it's not. And the truth is, there's no reason to want a clean white ash. I mean, it's something that people put in their tobacco reviews for reasons I don't understand. If you look at uh, what is it, tobaccoreviews.com, uh, pretty much every tobacco winds up smoking to a clean white ash, in somebody's opinion. It's not important. You have a little bit of dottle at the bottom of the bowl, that's life, you know. It's not, it's not like you're a less, you're less of a pipe smoker if you, if you can't get to a clean white ash. Some people say they don't like to smoke the bottom of the bowl. The taste is different. They think it's more bitter, uh, more ashy. Well, then don't smoke it. Dump it out. Let the pipe cool. Pack another bowl. Or pick up another pipe. 
uh, there's no reason to, to get to the bottom of the bowl except for when you're um, when you've got a new pipe I, I always try at least for the first maybe three to five bowls I try to make sure that I get all the way to the bottom and that's just to make sure that you've got cake forming on the bottom as well as on the sides if you and that's where that old idea of you know just smoke uh, a quarter of a bowl the first time and then you can smoke a half a bowl the second time I mean, you can do that it's just an easier way of making sure you get to the bottom in the first few bowls or you can just take the, the time and make sure you smoke all the way down again this is about avoiding burnouts and that's that's important I've repaired quite a few burnouts. I've had one briar pipe burn out on me in all the years I've been smoking pipes, um, and I believe there was a flaw in the briar in that one. I had one corn cob pipe burn out on me. First time I smoked it, I have no idea what happened there. I was driving. <coughs> Excuse me. I was actually on a fishing trip, and... Uh, had forgotten to bring anything to smoke. I didn't have any cigars, I didn't have any pipes. And I stopped off at this, uh, really it was a cigarette store, but uh, it was one of these border things where the, the next state has higher taxes, so they put a shop right on the border that sells cigarettes so people can come from that state and get them and sneak them back across the border. But they had a few corncob pipes and they had some very questionable <laughs> pipe tobacco. I forget what I went on getting. It was something like uh, oh, Borkum Riff or something, you know. But it was it was something. And uh, I got out to the car. I loaded up the cob. I lit it. And I had smoked cobs before. You know, I wasn't a new pipe smoker or anything. And I went driving back to uh, my hotel, happy as could be. Uh, well, if they had one a bookshop, I would have been happier. And as I was approaching the, uh, the hotel, I, you know, I'm clenching the pipe, I wrapped my hand around it like this, and I had this intense burning pain on my hand, and I looked, and there was just ember there. I have no idea why. Anyway, those are the only two burnouts I've ever had, and I, I chalk that up to tamping. I, I really think tamping is important. Uh, certainly, if you want to smoke all the way down to the bottom of the bowl. I'm going to tamp again now. And again, it's just very light, and I'm, I'm doing this with the tamper as I'm, as I'm pushing down, but very lightly. If you have one of those heavier tampers, like the Larry Blackett uh, pewter tampers, you don't even need to push. You could just let it rest and turn it. And I don't believe I've relit yet, so that's a good thing. So, if you're someone that doesn't like the bottom of the bowl, dump it out. If you want to be a guy that smokes all the way to the bottom, pay attention to tamping. If uh, you don't care, do either. <laughs> I don't care. I honestly don't. It's just whatever happens. And I'll often, like I'll be smoking this and I'll have to go do something. I'll put it down. I'll come back an hour later. I'll light it up again. Uh, sometimes I forget, you know, if you just look at it, you don't know how far down you've smoked. I, I'll forget and I'll just go to empty it thinking it's done and I'll find out I still had a bunch of tobacco in the bottom. That's fine. I don't need tobacco that bad. So I got a couple of things to show you in terms of a uh, little shop updates been been having some fun uh, you probably saw I think I showed it off last week maybe but I smoked my uh, my first billiard uh, pipe number one on the live stream on Friday really enjoyed it uh, it's got its problems you know it's not perfect but it, I'm pretty happy with it uh, I'm working on a couple of things here this is a pipe for my friend Peter, um, it's it looks a lot like a custom built, or possibly a marksman, but it's unstamped. It just says uh, authentic briar or something like that. So 
Don't know exactly what it is, but it's definitely from that era. And it didn't have a stem. And he asked me if I'd put a stem on, which I'm not doing, um, except for an occasional favor these days. So this is what I'm working on. So some, uh, I think it's called tan swirl acrylic. And I put a Delrin tenon on it. I, anytime I use acrylic, I use a Delrin tenon. And on the lighter colored acrylics, I try to remember to use a white tenon so it doesn't show through. Sometimes I forget that. And uh, I'm going to just be a straight taper. That's going to be a very nice pipe when it's done. So, working on that. I've also been fooling around a bit with this guy. This is going to be here. I should have used a white tenon, but forgot. Going to be a cob stem. I've never made a saddle stem for cob before, so I thought that would be kind of fun to to do. It's an interesting piece of acrylic actually because it's got the it's supposed to have this blue swirl running all the way through it, and it's got like a a clear swirl, uh, but the blue is only there. There's no blue all, all through here, which is kind of unfortunate. I couldn't tell that when I was uh, starting the stem. It, it it had blue swirl. You know, this was obviously much thicker, but as I got down to the middle, there is none. Uh, but it still has that, that clear uh, sort of swirl going through it, and I, I think it's going to be a real nice effect when it's done, and it does have that little note of blue up there, which is kind of cool. So, still a fair amount of work to do on that in terms of final sanding, a little bit of shaping, and of course uh, the button is not even begun. Yeah, that's a, just a fun little side project. I'll probably put this up on Instagram for sale when it's done. So if, you, if you're interested and you don't follow me on Instagram, the link to that is below. Well, not the link, but the the name, which is just Team Rod Piper. You can just search that on Instagram if you want. Really good pipe community over on Instagram. I, I enjoy it. It's a lot easier to take a picture and write something than it is to make a video. So <clears throat> I think a lot of people that follow YouTube and are part of the YTPC but don't have the time to produce videos, they head over there and they show photos and it's, it's nice. I'm going to talk a little bit too much now. One other point on this, uh, relights are not a problem, you know. Get people that say, "Oh, you, I, I don't have to relight it." Well, that's fine. The one thing to keep in mind about relights, though, is that the smoke will never be hotter than it is during a relight. So, if you're going to burn your tongue, that's when you're going to do it, unless you got like a really wet tobacco or something. So, puff gently on the relights, and uh, just be aware of that heat. Okay, last thing I wanted to show you, I've been doing some work on my, my belt sander. Uh, if you watch the Friday live stream, I had an issue where the disc on the side of the sander flew off and hit me while I was working on a stem. It was completely non, uh, completely benign. You know, I got hit in the chest with a piece of sandpaper, but it could have been a problem. You know, I was wearing eye protection. If I wasn't and it came off and hit me in the eye, that could have been really bad. And as I said on Friday, I don't like it when my tools throw things at me. So uh, apparently this, I, it was a brand new sanding disc. Um, I'm having trouble finding eight inch sanding discs from a reputable manufacturer, but I've got a lot of sources now. The guys on Friday night sent me sources. My buddy, the Durham Duke, sent me an email with a, a local source actually in Philadelphia that I'm looking into. So I will find these. But for now, I, I need to use the sanding disc, so I got some uh, adhesive spray. I forget what it's called. I think it's, I'm looking at the, the can over there, but it's not turned <laughs> to where I can see it. I think it's called Weldwood uh, Spray Adhesive. I use it for a lot of things. It's really sticky. So I got that. I sprayed it on the back of the disc. Even though the disc has the PSA on it, it, it just wasn't sticky enough. And I put that on it. It seems to be holding well. Uh, while I was doing that, I finally fixed a problem that's been bothering me for years. So, 
See if I can show you this. This is the side of the sander. It's got these two little knobs on it that you have to take off in order to remove the side and change the belts. And you can see the, the I put red lines that point to the, to the little knobs. So these things are just awfully designed. That's one of the knobs. Um, so when this is on, you've got to get your fingers around this little tiny triangular piece and turn it and you know it's pointy and it's just hard to grab and it's a, it's real fiddly to get them back on and everything I drop them and I have to find them so I finally after 15 years or so <laughs> decided to do something about it and what I did was really simple I just got it's a one inch piece of Delrin drilled a hole tapped it it's a quarter 20 thread and uh, Now I got these nice, uh, robust, chunky knobs that I can grab onto and take off quite easily. I can get my whole hand around them. Uh, you know, it's much easier to grab this like this than to try and get your fingers around this little fiddly thing. So I'm real happy about that. I mean, sometimes it's the simple things, <laughs> the really simple things that, that make me happy. And anytime I can improve a tool, But that machine is wonderful. They don't make them anymore. It's a one inch uh, Shopmaster by Delta. And I love it. I use it a lot um, for a lot of things, you know, not just for pipe stuff. Uh, it's just very handy to have a, a sander like that. And I rebuilt it a couple years ago. I, I gave lots of updates on that as I was doing the rebuild. You know, replaced all the bearings, um, replaced the tensioning mechanism on it. And as long as I can continue to get parts for it, that thing will run until long after I'm around. Uh, the only part that is likely to fail again is that tensioning mechanism. And it's made of uh, like pot metal. It's, it's not a good like cast iron or um, steel piece. And it, it's under tension and just over time it, it's going to crack. Well, I am nearly done. So I think I will get on with my Sunday and I'll let you all get on with yours. I thank you for joining me today. I hope you found the, the little chat about tamping and clean white ash to be informative. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed the shop updates. So with that, I will draw this to a close. Thank you again. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.